Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. 19th of October, we're going to do an update on Bitcoin today. So, very exciting times. US election is just around the corner. Um, there's a lot of a fundamental catalysts that could hugely impact on stock markets and Bitcoin. We're going to run through these in detail. As per my previous videos, we're going to run through reasons for strength in Bitcoin and reasons for weakness. I'll share with you my bias. Um, and also explain where I see Bitcoin going ultimately. I'll explain my invalidation point and how if we do see price kind of go deviate in a different way, um, then I would change my analysis. So I'll explain my invalidation points. Uh, so we'll be looking at correlating charts as well, in particular looking at the stock markets. So that's basically what we're going to look at in today's video. So if interested, then stay tuned. All right, guys. So welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since my last video. We've got a really busy month. I uh, had to prioritize videos for the group mainly just because, uh, yeah, it's been an incredibly busy month for myself. But we, I think this video has been timed pretty well, actually, because we're at a, at a point here on a high time frame point of view where we're basically at resistance uh, on Bitcoin. And I'll, I'll give you my views, uh, which if you've been watching my videos of recent, I do have an overall bearish view. I still maintain that bearish view. But as I say, we're right at the point of invalidation. And if price continues higher, it will suggest that we're probably going into an uptrend maybe over the next few months. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go into this in detail. And um, first thing I want to mention is because it's been a while since I've done a video, uh, you know, every, every once in a while I will put out a discount for the group. So just quickly bring you to my website, wave618.com. Group is here, Cryptology. You can click on it to get more details about what's involved. Basically, you get Discord access. Every week I cover the top 15 market caps. So if you do want to see my material on a regular basis, that's where you can check it out. Price is here. And uh, yeah, so check that out if you're interested. Doing a 25, so 50% uh, discount. Link will be in the description to this video. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So back to Bitcoin. All right, so what we want to do is, first of all, we'll discuss the long-term count. So I've been looking at it as a major WXY coming down. All right, so this is my bias. And one of the main reasons for this bias is because I see weakness in the stock markets. Um, Basically, I do think we could see a horrendous pullback in the stock markets. I really do think that's possible. Um, we're very, very overbought. We've got unprecedented uh, threats to the US economy right now in the form of a coronavirus second wave and also a switch, a potential switch in presidency at a point where, as I say, the, the economy is very fragile. So these are the two big catalysts. Obviously, the US election on... It's just around the corner. I've got this vertical line on the chart, 3rd of November. Obviously, it might be a little bit later until we get a result. But yeah, around this time is where we can expect some kind of a, uh, a drastic move. I do think following the outcome of that, we are going to get a trend that will last probably at least six months. Yeah, so this is why I think it's really exciting times to potentially look for trades for you know good entries that for a run that could last, as I say, several months. So... This is why I think it's a really important time right now. And it's why I think this video has been pretty well timed. Uh, because as I say, I do feel that we're sat at invalidation for, from, for the bearish point of view. So major count, as I say, we're looking at it as a W, X, Y down to here. Exact target yet has not been confirmed because I'm waiting for this high to be confirmed, which hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, but we're looking for price to get caught up in this range here around 2k where you'll be getting confluence with the lower median line of this major pitchfork you'll see this major pitchfork it's been generated using a shift pitchfork first pivot second pivot third pivot these points stand out very very clearly that's how you can often draw your pitchforks i generally like to draw them using the first three pivots um or basically using the first two waves of an elliott wave count so your first wave and your second wave yeah as i say that's my w that's my x so um 
yeah, that's how it's been drawn. And you can see how the lines are getting respected very, very nicely. So we've got a few extra lines here. Usually I just have the median line, the upper median line, upper warning line, and the same on the downside. Uh, but we've got here the 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.75. Uh, and you can see how these levels are getting respected very nicely. And right now we're back at the upper median line, which was tested nicely here, got rejected, and now we're back at it once more. Okay, and this is basically what I'm basing my... Um, bearish bias off of at present. This is the high time frame uh, pitchfork that I'm looking at. And if we do manage to get above it um, and stay above it convincingly, that will switch my bias. I will not be looking for shorts as long as price is above this line here, this upper median line. All right. So that's the long term Elliott wave count. Um, I know lots of people will have variable Elliott wave counts. Uh, there'll be some looking for a move up to 16k and then finding resistance i am certainly of the opinion there's a huge amount of resistance at 16k and if we do manage to push higher here i would certainly if by taking a longer i'd be taking profits at 16k no doubt about it then there's people looking for 20k to get here and then go even higher uh, i really don't see that elliott wave count to be honest i have to say that um yeah my number one count would be as it is right here next most probable count from a bearish point of view would probably be just because every single wave here has looked corrective since you know we've had our high at um, $19,666 um, yeah everything since has looked corrective every single wave including this here which I know a lot of people are looking at it as an impulse and yes looking at it at first glance it does look impulsive but I've discussed many times before why you know I'm anticipating why well, I have that as a corrective count I'm not going to go into it because it'll be too much of a discussion for today's video. But um, yeah, so the triangle is still a viable count. A, B, C, D, and E, and then up from there. It's still viable because you've still obviously got those corrective waves um, since your high here. Only problem I have with that is because of the volume profile. Really, you would expect volume really to just, if we... You'd expect a descending volume profile throughout and you'd, you get this spike here which completely ruins it. So that doesn't mean to say it can't be a triangle. I've seen many triangles still play out despite you know a, an irregularity in the uh, volume profile but it just puts me off it a little bit and on top of that if we are going to see uh, you know a big pullback in the stock, stock markets I struggle to see how this triangle would hold. Okay on top of that I am seeing corrected corrective moves to the ups sorry completed corrective moves to the upside in pretty much all of the top 15 market cap altcoins um for on crypto so um another reason why i've got a much more advanced bearish target which as i say is around 2k all right but first things first is we need to find out what is going to go on here yeah so as i say that's the major pitch for this upper median line that's the resistance i'm looking at now if we home in let's go in on the four hourly Let's take off volume. It's not needed at present. So we we have come down in what looks like three waves and then we're going up in what looks like three waves. So it, to me, it's just looking like uh, a sequence of three wavish counts here and I anticipate it's keep coming down in these kind of three wavish sequences. You know, following three waves down, you would hope to see from a bullish point of view as to go into an impulse. Yes, it is still possible. You know, there's no nothing to suggest we don't just plow higher from here. At present, though, we are certainly following this pitchfork, which let's home in a bit further on the hourly. So this is on the hourly. And we yeah, we're following this modified shift pitchfork where we've got first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, and we've gone into the median line. And now we're tagging the upper median line just shy of it the second time round. And you can see this is the upper median line of the major pitchfork, which we are above right now. Yes, we did see some strength. Obviously, we saw uh, consolidation here, price gradually uh, rounding out a bottom and making a higher high on the shorter time frames. But we've seen a little bit of a pullback here. Now, there's a, a very important level at 11, what was it, 11,685. Yeah, this is a, a very important historic horizontal level on Bitcoin. And I'll be interested to see if we get a daily close above or below this level. Yeah, that's one key thing I'll be looking out for. Uh, also, if we look at a FIB from the top to the bottom, 
you know, we just tagged the 0.786, so another reason for a bit of resistance at this point. Okay, so as I say, I'm not looking for shorts whilst we're above this upper median line on the higher time frame pitchfork, yeah, because this is my high time frame bias. So once we come back beneath, I'll certainly be looking out for shorts, especially when we get beneath this median line, yeah. If we come down from here beneath the median line, to me, this is not looking like a, an impulse going higher. It's not looking like a one, two, and then going into a three. If we come beneath the median line um, before this makes a higher high here, then to me, this is all looking like a completed three wave move up, setting up the next leg down, taking out this low. And I do think it could lead to a much more aggressive sell off from there. Um, on top of that, there is the argument for a potential truncated move here. You know, come down in three, and then you'd expect an impulse, but it's just getting truncated, failing to push any higher. And that is a, a view that I've been having looking at the stock markets also, which we'll take a look at in a moment. So these are the, the pitchforks that I've got my eyes on at, mo at the moment. As I say, this is the point of invalidation for me, this major upper median line for the pitchfork here. Um, if we go on the daily, let's just quickly run through these points that I mentioned um that are key points looking out for strength or weakness in bitcoin so as i say for me if it is to go above the upper median line here i'd be looking for a move into 16k i would look for longs into 16k um at which point i'd certainly be taking profits because of the heavy resistance at that point um so yeah other things to look out for uh on bitcoin the 20 week sma i need to remind myself where that is let's just pull that up Bear with me. So that's the green line here. So let's have a look what our 20 week is doing. So this is currently holding price up quite nicely. Yeah, we're finding support of the 20 week. Yeah, so from a high time frame point of view, you would want to see price get beneath the 20 week uh, for a bit of confirmation that it is certainly uh, trending downwards. Yeah, as long as we're above the 20 week, there will be a lot of bulls looking for you know this trend to continue to the upside. All right, just coming back to the points here. So, yeah, we've got a weekly doji, which was quite key as well. Uh, just bear with me, let's pull that up. So, yeah, that was this doji here. There's a doji in here on the... Um, yeah, on the weekly time frame. You don't get that many doji on the weekly time frame. There's this one here really stood out and it's in and around 10k obviously 10k also a psychological level for for support so another reason for support in and around 10k we've got 10k being a psychological level we've got obviously acts as resistance 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 here and i wouldn't be surprised for it now to add to support obviously it's been tested once but um yeah it could continue to hold a support potentially we've got the weekly doji we've got 9833 which is around uh, this red dotted line here, that is basically your halfway point between zero and the all time high. Um, and we've also got the, the weekly R3, uh, that's the Camarilla pivot. So let's just pull that up as well. Let's take off all the other annotations to look at that. So this is the weekly R3. So again, at 10K, we've got that support from the weekly R3. I was anticipating a run into the R4. A failure to reach that is a, a sign of weakness here in Bitcoin. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Certainly, if we finish the year beneath R3, that is a horrendous turnout for Bitcoin. And it would suggest much uh, heavier downside for Bitcoin, in my opinion. So that's how I'm looking at it from the high time frames on the camera of pivots. Just going back. Um, we've got the NASDAQ 20 day SMA, which we're currently above. Yeah, so that's looking at it from the stock market point of view. So th those are the reasons for strength. That's why basically 10K is support here. Yeah, loads of reasons for support at 10K. But in my opinion, next time it comes down, I feel that 10K breaks. Simple as that. But that's a, the, the bullish reasons. You know, the, these are the reasons that are in support of the, the bullish outlook. And would support, if we do stay above this upper median line of the higher time frame pitchfork, would support a move up to 16.5k. All right. Reasons for weakness, as I say, looking across, across uh, the top 15 altcoins, um, they're all looking very, very weak. Very weak. All looking to have completed a corrective move up uh, of recent. 
Um, obviously, we've got the coronavirus second wave. So just going into fundamentals a little bit. Um, yeah, we've got s s potentially six months of cold weather to put up with. And already, um, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in the UK already, um, hospital capacity is being tested quite significantly. Um, so, and we've got a lot more time to endure. So it, it's pretty scary times. They could certainly have to close the economy even further. Um, so that's that. And obviously the US election, obviously just around the corner. Yeah, two major, major catalysts. So that's how the fundamentals, obviously whenever you've got uncertainty, it's, you know, a bit of a deterrent for investors. So, and then we've got the daily S3 on Bitcoin. So let's just pull up the camera of pivots once more, just to go back on the, the daily time frame. <clears throat> okay. So the daily S3, Okay, so it was resistant. That was for last month. So it acts as resistance here, and for the for this month here, we we closed just above the S four. So that was a bit of that was a show of strength actually, managing to close above, and that allowed it to rally, go above the R three here, and now this is what I'm closely looking at this month. The R three is very very significant. You would want to see a close above the R three if you're bullish. And if it finishes beneath the R3 for the month, that would be very concerning from a, you know, for an outlook with a bigger move to the downside. All right, uh, just pulling up the list once again. All right, so. Um, yeah, these are the main things. Now, we did talk about in the group, we did talk about a pre-election rally. Yeah, you often get price going in one direction, pre-catalyst, and then post-catalyst, you'll see a big reversal. The best example I can remember of that was with Brexit. Yeah, we had a run-up into 1.5, yeah, $1.5, and, um, and then it completely tanked from there. Yeah, so but you often see it in and around catalyst, you'll get a nice corrective move into the catalyst and then you get your, your sell off. Yeah, so I was anticipating a bit of a, a, a move up here and I feel like that move up now has probably been exhausted. I can't see it going any higher. If it does, it's kind of invalidating the high time frame bearish view. So, um, yeah, I think it might have exhausted its move up here and could be starting to come down. OK, so. That's pretty much all I want to add for Bitcoin for right right now. We will just take a look at the stock markets where I'll also show you how we're seeing a bit of weakness coming in. Um, and um, yeah, basically these pitchforks are what I'm going off. As I say, coming beneath the median line on this smaller pitchfork will be confirmation that this is uh, showing weakness here. Whilst if we continue to push higher, for example, closing the week above this upper median line, that would be a very good show of strength for Bitcoin. And as I say, I would be looking out for long moves if it does manage to do that. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting times for Bitcoin. Now, just pulling up a few stocks. So I want to quickly look at the Nasdaq. Now, I'm not going to go through the high time frame count here because I'd like you to check out my last video on Bitcoin where we discuss Bitcoin and Nasdaq if you want to see that in more detail. All right because I really went into detail on that. Uh, but basically, I have a count suggesting uh, a wave 5 of 5 of 5, basically an all-time high here. Definitely, at least from our uh, 2008 financial crisis onwards, there's a five-wave count up to here, and it could suggest a big sell-off. Now, the move down, admittedly, yes, it does look very three-wave-ish. Uh, it doesn't look, doesn't look too impulsive coming down, but then there's the argument... If it is a corrective move down, you can argue this is a truncated final move up, failing to take out this high, then setting up you know, a stronger move to the downside. Um, so again, um, I've got a pitchfork here, looking at it from a first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, good run into the upper warning line. That is where we sold off. We et into the bottom of this block here, uh, tested that. Three way we should kind of move up here and then we're coming down following this pitchfork which is let's go on the 15 minute it's following it pretty nicely to be honest first pivot second pivot third pivot modifies shift and yeah we struggled around the upper median line 
And now we've, it looks like at present, we're coming and testing the lower warning line. May see a little bit of a bounce here. Or what often happens with pitchforks, once you exhaust the extremities of one pitchfork, it will shift to the next. So this could then switch to the original. No, so it won't be the original because we've already breached that one. So you might get a little bit of a, a bounce here in um, in stocks. Yeah, because it's kind of come to the lower warning line here. Also, this lower median line here may offer a bit of support. Might have another leg down slightly, and then we see a little bit of a bounce. Uh, prior to the US election, I wouldn't be surprised that we don't see a major sell-off straight away. You might see just a, a lot of sideways price action running into the US election. So that's basically just wanted what I wanted to demonstrate here on the NASDAQ. Now, also, obviously, the blue chip stock, so in particular, Apple, Amazon, I want to highlight. So on Apple, I mentioned... I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my last video. We've certainly been running through it in the group quite a bit. But for the final five waves up, um, yeah, we breached this pitchfork. We breached this pitchfork to the downside. Low warning line was broken here. We then had a bit of a move up uh, and it followed this smaller pitchfork to the upside. And you can see how wonderfully well it hits the upper warning line and gets rejected. Yeah, to me, it's not looking too impulsive, this move up here. It really isn't. Uh, to me, it's looking corrective and setting up another move down to take out this low. And yeah, as I say, check out my last video on stocks if you want to know my long time frame. Elliott Wave counts on that. Uh, looking at Amazon, same kind of picture. Yeah, for the final five waves up, we've broken the pitchfork to the downside. Um, admittedly, just like on NASDAQ, it looks like three waves down and then we've made a, another move up. But as I say, it could just be a truncation. It could be a corrective move truncated final leg up and then we're coming down uh, one chart i want to also highlight is tesla which was showing relative strength but now that is also showing weakness this was following this pitchfork really really nicely we've got a first pivot second pivot third pivot um, pitchfork was holding really nicely all the way up here kept getting held up at the lower warning line once twice three times fourth time it's broken for me this again is confirmation of weakness across stocks because we were seeing relative strength in Tesla um, and we all know it's a very volatile asset and once this comes down it could come down very fast so again another sign of weakness here in um, in stocks uh, we could just take a quick look at S&P uh, so S&P again we've come down it looks three wave-ish and then we've gone up. Is it a failed uh, final wave to the upside? Uh, or is it just going to come down in a series of three down um, and then a, a three up and then another three down? It's possible. But as I say, just simply looking at this, we've followed this pitchfork really nicely and we've broken the lower warning line, broke it, retest, and then we're selling off here. Yeah, so I'm not going to go into too much detail of Elliott Wave counts here because as I say, we went into it in the last video. Uh, but certainly things seem to be breaking down a little bit here in stocks already but might not commit to a convincing move down until the u.s election that's basically how i'm looking at it and you might get that continued kind of sideways price action on bitcoin also but as i say main thing to highlight from today's video is on bitcoin and the main thing to, to point out here is the upper median line on this high time frame pitchfork for me this is a really, really important level. It's the important level in and around these catal the catalyst of the US election, which as you can see, we're getting squeezed into right now. So these are the lines of interest to me. November 3rd, obviously, maybe a bit later for when we get our result. The median line on this smaller pitchfork, yeah, and then the upper median line on this pitchfork. These are the three lines I've really got my eyes focused on right now. And um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out right now. I'm still maintaining that bearish bias. Um, I think, let me just remind myself, yeah, on the NASDAQ, or actually even on the on Bitcoin, one hourly Camarilla pivots. Honestly, Camarilla pivots are very, very useful when you get the hang of them. It really tells you what's going on with momentum. Um, let's just pull those on. Because what I was looking out for was either a test of the R3 or the R4 today. And you can see how nicely we hit the R4. Basically, what happened in the period before, when you're on the hourly time frame, you look at um, 
each range here represents a week yeah and you can see how we failed to get above the r3 yeah uh so we basically okay if you go to the week before we completely obliterate the r4 telling you you're going to into an uptrend yeah the following week we find resistance at the r3 and we fail to close the week above the r3 so that's a show of weakness so for the following week what you do is you look for resistance at either the r3 or the r4 it did manage to make it to the r4 and that's where you can see there was a big sell-off so that was pretty interesting here on bitcoin um and we'll see now um I'm, I, I will certainly be monitoring this camera pivot for this week in particular to get a gauge as to whether we're seeing weakness coming in you know if we finish the week beneath the r3 that would be a, a certainly a sign of weakness or else if we get above the r4 for the week huge show of strength all right so these are all the key things that i'm looking out for in uh bitcoin and across the stock markets right now so i hope that's been of use um i think that pretty much sums up everything i wanted to say um just having a look to see if there's anything else no that's pretty much it so yeah we'll see how things play out guys um yeah by all means put in the comments below tell me if you're bullish or bearish i'd love to hear your sentiments i i'm i'm very aware that people will have very um, varying views at the moment i know a lot of people are bullish on the stocks and, and bitcoin saying oh the, the government will just uh, print money yeah and we'll see inflation because of that uh thing is with that you can get what's called a, a liquidity trap yeah you can print money all day long that's not necessarily going to give you inflation it's people spending spending that money that has been put into circulation it's that that is required to cause inflation at the moment we have a deflationary backdrop which is caused by covid all right so yeah i wouldn't count on uh helicopter money uh saving the um saving the economy so we'll see how it plays out but um as i say i've given my views from a ta point of view mainly um and uh yeah we'll wrap it up there guys all right take care